It's just one better. Very good. Okay. So why do we want to um, grow the community and why do we want to keep the ones you have? Of course, it's more fun with more people and um, <coughs> you have you get more ideas, you get more code done, you get more promotion done, um, and all the stuff. So generally, more people and more dedicated people, more good. Um, <coughs> and I'd like to think uh, of a community as some kind of um, solar system. Um, so you have your, your core in the middle and all these, <coughs> sorry, and all these uh, small groups flying around it who are not at the core of your community, but who are doing stuff for you or who are just, just watching you. And um, there's a rule, it's called 99.1, uh, so which says that 90% um, of, your, of your people that you have are just watching um, and not <coughs> really doing something. Then you've got about 9% who do some stuff here and there, like answering a question on a mailing list or, <coughs> or writing a Wikipedia article for you, stuff like that. And then you have got 1% which is really driving your project and um, which is the core of your project, so to say. And you want to get people from the outside to this core. Um, to this 1%, you want to move them there. And while doing that, you have a few enemies. And there are some things that are not your enemy. Um, people often think that, for example, oh, my project isn't that cool, I can build a community around it, or my project doesn't have enough users to really build a community around it. That's not true. You can build a great community with few people. Thank you. And um, there's hardly a program not cool enough to um, not build one around it. So I want to talk about what I think is actually um, working against you when pimping your community. And first one is time. Um, two things to this. One, it's your your own time. You need to spend time on this. You need to interact with people to get them in and you need to do stuff. This will cost some of your time. Some need more, some need less. And then people are, the people you want might be busy. But it's often just a matter of adjusting priorities um, of those people. And also there's about a gazillion people on this earth who are not busy and those you want to reach as well. So your second largest enemy, insecurity. Um, as we've seen in the women talk before, there's lots of insecurity in people before doing something in the open. Might just be writing code or standing in front of an audience like this or um, writing an article for, um, for a news outlet, uh, The Dot, or even writing a simple blog entry. Um, I've had people who were really intimidated by that. Um, this also shows when, um, <coughs> when we looked through applications for uh, Summer of Code, for example. People came to us and oh, am I good enough for this? And can I do this? Am I up to the task? So you need to start encouraging people and show that they can do something for you with little knowledge also, which they, they very likely have a lot more knowledge than they think, but you need to show them that it's okay to come and help you with little they have, or they think they have. <coughs> okay, uh, your third enemy. Missing publicity and transparency. If you don't 
publish what you're doing and what you need, no one's going to help you. <laughs> um, I've seen it a lot. But things like, oh, you might need some people, but you never see, like, okay, this is a, our task list. We need this, this, and this, and this done. Um, a very easy way to do this is just add junior jobs to our book, to that, for example. Um, it's advertised, and people actually look there for very simple tasks, which also help you with your previous enemy, uh, insecurity. Those are small tasks. And the other thing is, if, if you do a lot of stuff on, for example, only your private ISC channel, so um, people don't see what you're doing. And if they don't see it, they can't get excited about it, and they can't um, develop a feeling of wanting to get involved with whatever you're doing. Then there's, of course, um, barriers to entry. This might be a simple login that's required. Simple things is that are really lowering the number of people who want to help you. But there's, there's lots of them. Um, missing documentation on how to install your program. Seen it all. Um, <coughs> then there's page provide what they are looking for. If someone is um, helping with your project, they're probably doing it for a reason. And there are lots of them. And if you can't give them what they are looking for, they're probably going to move on. Like um, some are in it to find friends. So if there's no real social interaction in your um, project, they'll probably move on. Recognition. If they don't get the recognition um, they want from the people inside your project and maybe also people outside the project, they're going to move on. So find out what people are looking for and give it to them, or try at least. Um, then there's, of course, social problems <laughs> in your team. If you have that guy, <laughs> then um, you need to consider how much it costs you. Because it's not just inside your team, but also people are watching you. And if you have, I don't know, if your main developer is a really rude bastard, people are seeing it from the outside, on mailing lists and so on, and will consider not joining you, of course, simply because um, it's not the project they want to be involved with. So keep an eye on also what kind of image you're giving um, to the outside. Um, yeah, missing diversity. If your team is just as neatly <laughs> composed as those ladies, then um, you can run into serious trouble for several reasons. One, um, your project might simply die. Say you have a, a project composed of just students. They're going to finish university one day and um, no one might be able to pick up. Or they might all get parents, um, become parents, and the baby is more important after that, of course. And the thing is, um, you need to actually put an effort into this. Because if you don't, you're going to recruit people you already have. Um, if your project is heavily ISC based, you're likely not going to get people um, interested in communicating in a forum. So make an effort and um, go into other medias of communication, um, go into other countries, um, other languages, and so on. It will help make your project more stable and it will help sustain it. And of course, you get more good ideas from people you might otherwise not have met. OK, and um, the last one is, of course, technical problems. If your program is really hard to build, if your code is not at least somewhat documented, people are not going to 
or the effort they have to put in to join you will be extremely high and might not be low enough for them to um, actually do something for you. <coughs> okay, so next I'm going to talk about some black magic. <laughs> Use it carefully because it might turn against you. Um, not too long ago, someone came to me and, hey, I've heard um, you have these uh, Sum of Code students, and I'd actually like to have one too, but I don't have the time to mentor anyone, and I need a maintainer. I need a maintainer for my program. I was like, hmm, that's great, but they don't fall from heaven. <laughs> You have to actually train them, raise them, integrate them in your team, show them around what they have to do to actually become a maintainer. And it wasn't so obvious to him. So this costs time, of course, but it's time well invested, um, in my opinion. So how do you get people to, to notice you and to notice what they can do for you? Well, for one, you've got social tools. Take, for example, Identica. There's a KDE group where you can post and reach about 3,000 people with one message. Ask them to help you edit a wiki page or whatever. Um, I often ask them for help with um, graphics, for example. I always get an answer and uh, get a job done. It's really easy. Same for example for Facebook. There's a KDE group with 2,000 and something fans. They all get your message. Mm. There's, there's Planet KDE. Um, I don't know how many people read it, but it's a lot. So use those tools and um, spread the message about what you need, um, what you do, and um, that's, this also helps you to show that you're actually uh, a human being doing this and not some semi-god writing code in a, <laughs> in a corner um, who doesn't want help from anyone. Which most of the, case, uh, most of the time isn't the case, of course. Um, keeping it together. I've seen it a lot that people um, tend to split up parts of their community because they have the feeling that they're annoying the larger part or that, they're, that they need their own little private space. And in all the cases I've seen, well, let's say 99%, it was bad. Because you're splitting from the larger part of your community and you inevitably lose those, those people flying around at the outer circles because they will not necessarily do the jump and move to a new IRC channel or subscribe to yet another mailing list and so on. They are already on this main one. So unless you're at the point where it actually is painful to stay in a larger group, the general rule should be keep it together and um, use what you have. <laughs> well, that one is obvious, right? make getting started stupidly obvious. If people don't know how to approach you, how to get their code submitted, um, how to send you a text for, for a new blog or whatever, they're not get, going to do it. And if you have extremely, um, extremely, like KDE's websites is my favorite example for this. You have to get an SVN account, you have to get a special commit bit, and then you have actually have to check out the website, edit it, check it back in. This is a pretty <coughs> huge, um, huge thing for someone who just wants to edit one link, for example, and fix it. Don't do that. Write it down. Um, if you have someone committed to doing something for you, if you actually want to get it done, let them write it down. <laughs> it increases the likelihood of them st uh, 
actually performing immensely. And if you make it publicly written down, even more. Um, it just increases the, they want to stay true to what they put into um, writing and maybe even publicly. Um, if you have someone who already, who wants to work with you, give them a small task. And once they're finished, give them another one. Do this for two or three months. After these two or three months, if they're still around and doing stuff for you, they're likely going to stick. But you need to keep them for those first two to three months and keep them engaged, check back. Are you doing okay? Do you need help? Such stuff. And sometimes it's a good idea to actually make it someone's responsibility to um, take care of this, like welcome people on a mailing list or make sure they get the answer they need. Um, otherwise, in some communities you risk just losing those people. And as a last resort, very carefully, Fake it. Um, it's worked surprisingly well for some communities. <laughs> um, so, little checklist for, for your project. Is your, is your project visible in stuff like blogs, mailing lists, IRC journals, social media, and so on? Is it obvious how to get in? Is there a wiki page explaining it or something like that? Um, is it obvious why someone should help you? Um, then think about what they need and are you giving it to them? And are the relationships in your community healthy? If they're not, fix it. <laughs> For example, by um, getting community working group involved or something like that. Um, is the technical side of your project in order? If you can all answer this with yes, very good. <laughs> if not, fix it. So, um, there's a community Q&A session on Thursday. Uh, you can come there if you have questions, or you can catch me in the hallway, or you can email the community working group, of course, who are always there to help you. Don't email them too late. <laughs> We've had a few people email when it was way too late already. Are there any questions? Who's first? Here. The stupid, stupidly obvious question. How to get involved in this uh, uh, building the KDA community that you are doing now? In what? In what you are doing now. Um, what exactly? I'm doing a lot of things. <laughs> How to get involved in um, uh, building and uh, improving the KDA community in itself? Okay. Um, well, it depends. Um, usually, you you probably want to pick a, a sub project of KDE um, and talk to the people already involved in the project, where the problems are, and um, where they could use help, of course, and make suggestions how to improve it. Yeah, I think that's a, the way to go because KDE as a whole is very big and. It's easier to concentrate on, on, on smaller parts of it. Right? <laughs> Next on this side, <laughs> anybody? <laughs> yeah, I, I will come to you later, okay? Oh, well, uh, just uh, uh, a more uh, general co comment. I, I have seen some uh, community is trying to catch new people by blogging about it yes. and uh, then not being ready to, to, to handle people coming in 
because they have coordinated it, it badly. It could be when two main developers are on vacation, then yeah. it is not the right time to, uh, yeah. to try to attract new people. Definitely. If, you, if you're doing something like that, you need to be ready for, for the answers you get. I just have a small addition, because you were talking about uh, using the social tools. Yes. Yes, and uh, that's always, uh, I mean, obviously you're talking about the online social tools, right? But you also have, yes. well, yeah, that's where you put your effort. I mean, it's obviously because uh, you have virtual teams. Yes. But uh, you also have off offline, like, you know, in real life tools. So oh. start <laughs> nagging people and, you know, yes. tell them about the co project, Perfect, obviously. Cool. Yes, <laughs> now is your chance. Uh, as you know, uh, me and Sandra and Amanda are building a community in Brazil and stuff, but something's happened there that I was not ahead of. Um, Sandra did a open source programming course on um, UFBA, and the thing that happened is he was working with the guys for six months. Yes. So the two to three months really passed by, but every month the students looked like less capable of joining the community. So I, I'm seeing this also on the community of Cali that we are building on Live Blue. The thing is, how can we keep them interested in joining the community? Because they always After appear. After this first task, you mean? Or yeah, because they really appear to be enjoying. And yeah. when we first assign them something, they are just too busy to do or just too scared to try. Mm -hmm. Do you have any magic things to make them <laughs> really work or something? <laughs> well, I'm actually seeing it a lot that they don't, there's no, no follow-up after this first one. That, that's happening most often in my experience. Um, from, from the community side, like here's your, here's your next task. Are you interested in this or can you help me with this? This can be really small stuff, but keep them engaged. Mm -hmm. um, if this is not happening, that's a very good question. Um, well, meetings like inviting them to a sprint um, is often useful, of course. Um, but then again, there are people who just, who d just don't perfectly fit your community and then you probably also shouldn't like force them to, to be with you, you know? Um, yeah, that's true. Because that, that's not sustainable um, in the long run either, but. Okay. Uh, it's more a comment than a question. The, uh, the problem he just mentioned is the uh, same problem I had with the uh, whole KD Mexico thing. Uh, but the the way I kind of got around it was uh, actually setting up our own private server where where uh, well, let's say uh, people who might want to join KDE later on, especially in Mexico, mo most people don't know English that well, so uh, they're scared of you know uh, the whole community thing only speaking English and the okay, the well, uh, uh, being scared of of doing this is. Again, the insecurity and needs encouragement. And no, no, yeah, yeah. That, the thing is, we either uh, we can't teach everybody English. That's just going to be impossible. Yeah. Uh, but we are trying to uh, uh, show them that th it's not just people who speak yeah. English. There's also the the uh, uh, KDE uh, from Spain uh, group, and uh, what we what we actually did for it might help you anyway was create this little server where, where they can actually play around and we uh, review the patches they want to send in. And okay. after that, we might introduce them to somebody who already um, uh, could either uh, know Spanish or might be flexible uh, or might not correct them. And, 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 well, you know, who might be already prepared to yeah. uh, know that they are a little scared. That seems to work. Yeah, of course, of course. Thank you very much. I think we, we have here a good chance to, to solve that 
such types of problems because we have so many experienced people here around and I, I hope you, we all um, take that, that chance to, to discuss for you, uh, during breaks or the, the question and answer session on, on Thursday to, to improve our community in this direction. So thank you very much, Lydia, for your talk.